All right, guys, welcome to today's lesson in statics. Today we're covering problem number 130 from chapter 3. So number 130 says, Four signs are mounted on a frame spanning a highway, and the magnitudes of the horizontal wind forces acting on the signs are as shown. Determine A and B so that the point of application of the resultant of the four forces is at G. So we have four forces. We're going to have a resultant acting at point G, and we're going to determine what A and B distance should be in order to have that resultant act at point G. So first, I'm going to determine what the resultant value is. So if I look at my force diagram, I have 105 pounds, 160 pounds, 50 pounds, and 90 pounds, all acting into the page in the negative z-axis direction. So it would be negative 90 minus 105 minus 160 minus 50 would be our resultant and it's going to be in the k-hat direction, so it would be on the negative z-axis. So we're going to determine this value. We have, in our calculator here, we have negative 90 minus 105 minus 160 minus 50. That tells us our resultant is a value of negative 405 pounds of force in the k-hat direction. So that's in the negative k-hat direction into the page along the negative z-axis. This is important direction. So this is going to be negative 405 k-hat. Now we're going to determine the, the resultant moment about point B, the origin, if we were to have this resultant act at point G. So we're going to have the moment about point B, the resultant, will be equal to the position vector going from B to G, crossed with our resultant vector, R. We can determine our position vector going from B to G in the x-axis direction, notice in the positive x-axis pointing into the page. We're going a distance of 5.5 feet and then 9 feet, which would give us an i-hat value for the position, position vector of 14.5 feet in the i-hat direction. That's going along the positive x-axis, 5.5 and 9 together to get us to the point G. Now in the y-axis direction, in the j-hat direction, from point B, we appear to be going down a distance of 3 feet. So I would have minus going down 3 feet in the j-hat direction. There is no k-hat value. Uh, this sign is in the x-y plane. There is no k-hat or z-direction for the position vector, so it would be zero, so we can leave this off. And now we're doing the cross product of this with our resultant, which we know is negative 405 pounds of force into the page, or negative 405 k hat. So now we can evaluate this without using a determinant fairly simply, as long as we know our rules for multiplying cross producting unit vectors, i, j, and k. If we multiply i times j in a cross product, we would get positive k. If we multiply j times k, we get positive i. It goes in a circle. If we were to go around in the negative direction, in the clockwise direction, if we have j cross i, we would get negative k. So we get positive values going counterclockwise in the circle, negative going clockwise in the circle. So our first value would be 14.5 times negative 405. So multiply that out, we have 14. 0.5 times negative 405, which gives us a value equal to, write this right here, negative 5872.5. Notice, however, we have to take into account our unit vectors i cross k. i cross k, this is going clockwise, so it would be a negative. So we have negative, negative 558.72.5, which make it positive 5872.5. And we know this is a k hat, sorry, I apologize, this is a j hat value, i cross k, going backwards clockwise, gives us a j hat value. And then we have the next value, negative 3 times 405. So negative 3 times 405, negative 405 times negative 405 would give us a positive value 
of 1215. And notice we're doing J cross K. J cross K sticks with the clockwise, counterclockwise motion, which gives us an, a positive I hat. So we have positive 1215 I hat. So these are two components for our resultant vector. So we're going to say the J hat component, break that apart, into moment of B, the result of moment of B about the y direction, the y axis. So this would be 58, 72.5. And then this component would go to the x, around the x axis, the result of moment about B. It would be 12, 15 in the i hat direction. Good. Now we can sum our moments about the y axis for the resultant moment and we can say this would be equal to going to each individual force multiplying by its distance from the y-axis this would be and notice these forces viewed from the positive y-axis viewing looking down that axis are all acting counterclockwise creating a counterclockwise moment about y they're all to the right of the axis creating a counterclockwise moment from here creating a counterclockwise moment each one of these individual forces all right, so they'll all be positive. So we would have, for the first force at E, 90 times its distance B, we're trying to determine. And we have 105 plus 105 multiplied by 5.5. Plus we have now the force at G, 160 pounds. Multiply by its distance from the y-axis, which is 14.5 plus Finally, the 50 pound force at H multiplied by its 22.5 distance. So we have this equation. We can now solve for B. I would first multiply this out, subtract it from the side, and divide by 90. So doing that very quickly, <clears throat> all right, so first we have a value of 105 times 5.5. plus 160 times 14.5 plus now 50 multiplied by 22.5. Okay, so we're going to calculate a minute to catch up. We're going to go back and fix this 22.5 value. Okay. All right, so this would all condense into a single number. Equal to 4,022.5. We can subtract this number over here and divide by 90. So we're going to say this will be subtracted. It'll cancel with all this. Minus 4,000. 22.5. So we'd have 5872.5 minus 4022.5. Go ahead and move this calculator up a little bit. And we get a value for 90B, 90 pounds times our distance B equal to 1850. We're going to divide this now by 90. And we get a distance B equal to 20.5, repeating around this of 20.56 feet. Okay. Now, using the same procedure to find the value of A, we would say the 1215 number, this is going to be equal to, go down a line, it's going to be equal to, notice, the moment about the x-axis, this force is above the x-axis, these three are below. Looking at this value from the positive x-axis direction, force E is creating a clockwise moment. Looking about this axis, force E is creating a clockwise moment which would be a negative value. 
the other three forces below the x-axis are creating positive moments, they're creating counterclockwise moments viewed from above the x-axis. So you would have a negative value for 90 pounds multiplied by its distance above the from the x-axis right here, which is A, we're trying to determine. And then we have the other forces creating positive moments above the x-axis. So it's the force F would be 105 times its distance of 5 feet plus 160 pound force times its distance over here appears to be 3 feet. And finally we have our force H 50 pounds below the x-axis of a distance of please appears to be another 2.5 so a total of 5.5 feet. So I would combine again same procedure combine all this into a single number so I have 105 multiplied by 5 plus 160 multiplied by 3 plus we have a force of 50 pounds multiplied by a distance of 5.5 feet. So this would all condense into a single number equal to 1280. All right. So we would then subtract 1280. Subtract, yes, yeah, subtract 1280. It would cancel with this. Minus 1280. So 1215 minus 1280 would be equal to a value of negative 65 equal to negative 90 times distance A. We divide both sides by negative 90. And we determine distance A is equal to, we're going to divide this by negative 90. We'll determine distance A is equal to 0 0.722 repeating. So we'll just put in a couple of twos, three twos, why not? Repeating feet. So we have our distance A, 0.7222 repeating feet, and our distance B, 20.56 feet. All right, guys, thanks for joining me in another Simple STEM Solution video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support this channel or have particular questions you want answered, be sure to check out my Patreon community via the link in the description below.